I told you it was gonna happen. Apple unveiled the next generation, the Series 5 Apple Watch, alongside of their other Apple products. And so with all that information that we gather by Apple, that leads to question if should we actually go out and update to the Series 5? Let's go ahead and discuss. So as of right now, Apple discontinued the Series 4. It's no longer available on their Apple Store, but instead they kept the Series 3 and listed it down at a new starting price of $199. But I'm sure you can still find the Series 4 in retail stores. And if you wait a little bit longer, you might be able to find it at a discount sell price. Especially when the Series 5 is in their inventory. But in today's video, let's go ahead and discuss and see if the Series 5 is even worth buying or upgrading. Now I do understand a lot of people have many different backgrounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the video like this. If you never own an Apple Watch before and you wanna buy an Apple Watch for the first time, you're at a great advantage. You have two great options to choose from. You can either pick up the new discontinued price Series 3 for half the cost of what the Series 5 will run you. Which both, by the way, do run the latest watchOS 6 are fully supported. Just keep in mind if you do decide going with the Series 3 route, you lose all the many cool new Apple Watch faces, you don't have access to many of the cool new complications, and you lose some of its cool new health features like ECG and fault detection, as well as a decibel reader. But if you're coming from an Apple Watch Series 3 or older, you're gonna see huge benefits from switching to the latest generation Series 5. Especially since watchOS 6 is more focused on the larger size options, the 40 and the 44 millimeter Apple Watch screen sizes, and all the accessories that are available for the Series 4 are already made and available for the Series 5 on day one as they're both identical and share the same dimensions. So if you want to protect your Apple Watch Series 5, you can just pick up a current case that was made for the Series 4 and use it right away on day one on your Series 5. So with the Series 5, the big major change is obviously the always on display. This was a feature I'm sure many of us can also agree. This was something that we wanted since 2015. Another new feature innovation is the compass support. It is now only available on the Series 5. There's gonna be a new compass application and a couple of complications as well. These complications will allow the user to read altitude and latitude, which is a feature that the Series 4 never had, nor will it get it. And something to quickly note, although Apple says the Series 5 will be able to achieve the same 18 hour battery life, but this made me wonder what would happen if you disabled that always on display? Would that increase the battery life up to close to like maybe 24 hours under a single charge? So I guess Apple also left us with a couple unanswered questions. So we just have to wait until we actually get our hands on one. And similar to like other modern smartwatches that also have this always on display option, uh, whenever those devices you tap to wake up the screen, it switches and gives you more information. From what Apple gave us, the day view, the preview clips that they showed us, you can see that the Apple Watch also does this very similar thing. So when the Apple Watch is inactive on idle, it's going to dim down to the lowest brightness to preserve as much battery as possible. And when you wake it up, it's going to give you an entire different watch face, probably illuminating other complications. Now, the internal hardware, Apple was constantly saying the word efficient, 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 but they made no mention of any performance gain from the previous Series 4. But by going on the Apple website and you tap on the little spec sheet, the Series 5 actually looks like it's using a new 64 dual core processor S5 chip. So it is using the newer generation chip because the previous Apple Watch had the S4, this one now has the S5. But again, no mention in performance, only efficiency. So I'm excited to get my hands on the Series 5 to go ahead and compare it with the Series 4 to really see if there really was some kind of performance gain. But it's still using the latest Bluetooth, Bluetooth 5, and it also has the same health features that was found on the Series 4, like fall detection, ECG. But with the Series 5, it actually can get a hold of international emergency dispatchers without requiring you to have your phone nearby, your iPhone, as Apple explains it on their event. And this new Series 5 aluminum model Apple Watches are made out of 100% recycled aluminum, which is something that Apple seemed like they were very proud of, which I guess you could say is an added bonus for saving the environment. Even though processing the recycled aluminum, I'm pretty sure still hurts the environment, but it's better. It's a step towards the right direction, I'm sure. But these new aluminum models still come in the same color options like the silver, space gray, and gold. Just on the Apple Store, there's new band styles to choose from, new color options. And there's also a cool Creative Studio where you can actually personalize and create your very own combo. 
of these Apple Watches. A somewhat similar process what Microsoft does with their Xbox One controllers. And as I was fiddling around in the Creative Studio, I actually designed one and it's really user friendly. You simply choose the size option between the 40 or 44 millimeter. On the next page, you have the choice between aluminum, stainless steel, or that new titanium or ceramic. The titanium Apple Watch body starts at a whopping $799, and the ceramic body starts at the affordable price of just about $1,300. But it's still good to know that with the Series 5, we got new materials to choose from. But thanks to the Creative Studio, you could actually upgrade the band right then and there without having to buy the band separately and spend a little bit more money. The price updates as soon as you equip the band underneath. And if you want the Nike Plus Edition, that's also available. And the Nike Plus Edition also got some new band options to choose from. The Loop Band also gave us new options, and they still have the reflective yarn. By going with the Nike Plus Edition, you get some exclusive new color options for your watch faces, and some exclusive Nike Plus Edition watch faces as well for the same price as the Apple Watch Series 5 Sport. But unlike the standard Apple Watch, which is gonna get released on September 20th, the Nike Plus Edition will get released October 4th, but you could go ahead and pre-order both of them now. But all in all, the only big major change on the Series 5 was really just that always on display because as I mentioned, externally, it looks like identical to the Series 4, which isn't bad. I still like the screen display over the previous generation body styles of the Apple Watch, especially when you combine it with the newly added watch faces that's included on watchOS 6. So all in all, I'm gonna leave the video like this. If you're debating if you should go with the Series 3 or the Series 5 and you never own an Apple Watch before, there's really no wrong answers for this decision making. But if you wanna get the complete package, go get the Series 5. But if you don't care about the e ECG features, the fall detection, integrated compass, just to name a few. The Series 3 is a great Apple Watch still to this day, as it does all the main general stuff. It can still measure your heart rate. It will still notify you if it notice that your heart rate is at a dangerous level. It will be able to answer calls. And thanks to Watch OS 6, that watch is also very independent as it also has its own dedicated app store. You can also stream music on that Apple Watch with Spotify or other music platforms off the Apple Watch itself and pair it up to other Bluetooth headphones. If you need that cellular option, that's also available on the Series 3 and it's also waterproof. So yeah, it could still do everything else that the Series 5 can do. It could do a lot more than what a Fitbit can do. It can still keep track of your steps, your calories, and keep progress of your workouts and will automatically update all that information on your health app on your iPhone. Don't forget the Series 3 still supports Apple Pay so you can make purchases using your Apple Watch. So for half the cost, the Series 3, it's still a great device for a gift or again, if you don't care about all the other features. But if you already own a Series 3 or an older Apple Watch, you're at an even greater advantage because you're gonna get so much for waiting and skipping on the Series 4 and hopping onto the Series 5. Because the Series 5 is listed as the same price how much was the Series 4, and now you get that cool always on display. So no matter the angle that you have your watch, whatever you're doing, you're not gonna be required to move your wrist at a certain angle or tap on the screen in order to wake up the screen because you can always see the time no matter where or whatever placement you have your wrist. How Apple was demonstrating this to be a huge advantage is let's say you're on a run, you're marathon running, and instead of taking a pause to bring up your wrist to see the stats of your run. You can always just see it because that always on display has the number, all that information right there. So you don't have to stop. You can see it while you're still moving and going. But if you recently upgraded or you currently own the Series 4, I don't see a big major reason to really upgrade from the Series 4 to a Series 5. Unless you need that compass support, that's really it. Again, always on display is nice, but it's not really something that's a selling point for somebody who currently owns the Series 4. But either way, Whatever device Apple Watch you decide going for, the Series 5 or the Series 3, they both qualify for the one year free subscription of Apple TV Plus. So hey, there's always that. But there you guys have it. Hope this quick summary was able to help you out. In my opinion, I think Apple made it very confusing, especially since they discontinued the Series 4 and kept the Series 3. And I understand everybody has different situations, different backgrounds, but in general, the new thing about the Series 5 is just that new LTPO display that they're calling it. I still think it would be wise to just wait a little bit longer until reviewers, I get it, and start testing it out because I think if we disable the always on display, it might actually surpass the battery life from the Series 4 or even the Series 3. Just don't know how long. 
And since it is a new S5 chip set, I really want to test out to see if there really was a significant improvement in performance gain or not. So make sure to stay tuned for that video for you can answer all the other questions. And if you want to learn more about watchOS 6, be sure to check out this video right here so you get a better understanding of what all the new features of what these Apple Watches can do. And this video over here, that's a video that YouTube is recommending for you. So go ahead and check that out and comment down below if YouTube was correct. But that's going to be it for this video. Time to enjoy my coffee and cheers.